Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Lamar Renee Spencer, your favorite life alignment strategist, wife, relationship, and business coach. Absolutely. So thank you so very much for joining me today. And you know me. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening We're in those time zones. But you know me, let's get to it. Today, I want to talk about the signs that you're dealing with a person who's emotionally unavailable. And as I was thinking and I was looking at different examples to bring forth about a person who is unavailable emotionally, the first person came to my mind was Lauren Hill. And in the song, she talks about that. And the song, I don't know, I'm sure most of you have heard the song because she has many awards on it. But this was on her uh, miseducation, I believe it's called, of Lauren Hill. But the song is called X Factor. So I am not a singer, so I'm going to say the words. And in the lyrics, it said, tell me who do I have to be to get some reciprocity? See, no one loves you more than me and no one ever will. Tell me, how can I get some reciprocity? So, reciprocity means respect, okay? But I'm sure you know that. But I'm going to tie this into the phrase that you hear called being unemotionally available. And I'm sure some of your friends or you've heard it before, how they're dating someone or they're married to someone who is emotionally unavailable. But exactly what does that mean in terms of being in a relationship or dating someone that's emotionally unavailable? So, you know, healthy relationships should have open communication, vulnerability, and guess what? Reciprocity. They need that respect. So, these aren't necessarily the strengths of a people who are emotionally unavailable. But trying to date someone or be in a relationship with someone who puts up walls and avoids you unemotionally especially when it comes to intimacy, can be extremely frustrating and may lead really to the downfall of that relationship if the changes aren't made. So I'm going to ask you, have you been with somebody or are you with someone who's emotionally unavailable? So I'm going to give you an example. Um, I think it was Tyrone Taylor, the singer, but don't call me on that part. He said, your mind is here, but your body's on the other side of town. It's the same situation, meaning that you have a person that may lay next to you every day, or they may come see you. Y'all go out, hang out, but your mind is somewhere else. And really, you're thinking about someone else. Or, let's give a bit of a doubt. Maybe they ain't thinking about something else uh, as far as a relationship, but maybe it's a possibility that they just have so much mentally going on. It could be work or, you know, they could be taking care of a family member. They could be going through health problems. I mean, it could be so many different things. But for the sake of argument and for the sake of this, we're going to say, you know what, they're just emotionally unavailable. And you can base it on you know, what I tell you that the signs to look out for suggest to you if this sounds like something that you're probably dealing with. So one of the things that a person who's emotionally unavailable, what you're dealing with, is a person who's inconsistent, especially when it comes to communication. So when you're trying to form some type of connection with someone who's emotionally unavailable, You'll notice that the communication is barely there and or it may be inconsistent. You never know when you'll hear from them. And as a result, the relationship feels like you're the only one in it or you're kind of like in the passenger seat or in the back seat. So you know that person is sort of there, but you don't know where you are. So you kind of feel like you're on unstable ground with this person. Sometimes you hear from them, sometimes you don't. 
they'll say, you know what, I'm going to call you back in five or ten minutes. But they don't. It may be the next day or next week that you may hear from them. Or they may do a pop-up next week or whatever. But again, it's always when it comes to that communication, they're very inconsistent. And so you'll notice like at the beginning of this dating phase or even the relationship that how you start is how it ends. Just like the old folks tell you. I mean, that does not change. I don't care where you go in life. But sometimes when them old folks tell you something, you may want to listen. Or you're seniors. Like, you know, I don't want to be disrespectful. But yes, there's no satisfaction of communication. It's not amicable. You're you're in one direction. They're in a total different direction. And I'm going to tell you something. If you don't have communication at the beginning of your relationship, Trust me, it's going to be like that because you're setting the tone, you're setting the precedent for how it can be, and you are then making comfortable in that type of situation. So I always tell my clients, when you come into a relationship, make sure that you state all this from the door. Communication is the key, okay? Make sure that that's important. And some people may say, no, that's not important. You can talk about it later. But I say, no, you want to lay the groundwork or the foundation from the door. You can't build a house starting from the attic, right? You got to start from laying that foundation. So that is very important. But aside from that, they have problems with committing to plans. So these potential plans are really they're left up always in the air. You don't know what's going on. They keep you wondering. They have you waiting around for the text or the call or inbox. Now they have it. But you'll notice that they become very uncomfortable and very uninterested when you bring up plans, especially plans that are near and also in the future. So if this isn't the case, then guess what? You're now feeling very vulnerable. So when someone likes you and is and is emotionally available, the majority of the time when they make plans, they stick with it. And you'll notice that they're very uh, consistent with the communication and they show enthusiasm about planning for the future with you. Have you ever been with somebody? And I'm going to go back to the, to the ladies on this and I'm not saying it doesn't happen for men, but I'm talking to the ladies right now. Where you're with the person, right? And everything is good, right? But you know it's good for that time period, but you know that you don't know where he lives. You don't know what's going on with him. You ain't never been with family. You sure ain't met the co-workers, you ain't with the kids. But y'all going out for a significant amount of time, but... It's inconsistent. He said, yeah, babe, we'll pick you up. You know, we're going to go out to eat. We're going to, you know, go on a little weekend trip. We're going to do this, any other. But it's inconsistent. He don't come. He never comes through for you the way he say he is. He'll have all these big plans. And you might meet that one associate of his, but that doesn't mean that you're going to meet somebody who's close to him. Because, again, he may not be trying to bring you around at one. And I'm going to tell you some ladies. I know a lot of you have been in this situation, right? And I've talked about that before. So you're you're in a relationship, sort of, but you're really in a situationship. So that's what this kind of is. But they're emotionally unavailable. And I'm going to tell you something. Just because you're intimate with a person like this does not mean that they're emotionally there, okay? Just their body, but the mind is on the other side of town. And then... They always want to send you like mixed messages. So emotionally unavailable people can be extremely confusing. They may make up things, they come on strong, and then next thing you know, they're distance. They may say, I like you, you want to spend some time, just like I said, hey, I'll see you tomorrow, whenever. But they don't commit to anything like right now. And I'm just going to give an example because you know, I keep it real, I keep it funky. I've been with people like that, especially early on in my 20s. I was probably dumb out there, but I have to say that was in my training ground where someone will say, you know, I'm dating, you know, and it, again, don't have to be sexual, but you really like that dude, right? You really, really like them. Or girl, you really like them, right? But they'll call you up and be like, yeah, okay, you know, meet me here, we're going to do this. And okay, you meet them, and it's cool. 
right? Because they're spontaneous. But they may say, you know, we're going to go out again next week. But they leave it open. You don't know what's going to happen because they didn't make any plans. They're saying it, but there's nothing tangible there. You don't know what the plans are. You don't know if you're wearing shorts. You don't know if you need a swimsuit. You don't know if you need a ball gown. Like, you don't know anything. They're very confusing. They really are. And then what happens is, honestly, when you start telling them these things, they start ignoring you because they don't want to commit or they're hoping that you'll change your mind about it. And they flip-flop. They always flip-flop between what they're saying and if they want a relationship, one minute they want the relationship and the next minute they don't. And let me tell you something. This could be a big indicator of a person who you're going to either have a healthy or unhealthy relationship with. So readiness to jump into a new committed community, uh, relationship with this person that's committed plays a big role in how they will act going forward and also toward their partner okay so like i said notice these indicators from the beginning if you believe in a higher power that's fine if you don't but you know sometimes our intuition will start whispering and then next thing you know it starts hitting you with a ton of bricks like hey i've been telling you you've been seeing the signs but you didn't want to because maybe you think this dude is you know, sexy, he got the game, he can talk, he had communication, he got a good job, he seemed like he had the stuff in order. But unfortunately, sweetheart, you're not involved in those plans, okay? You're just for the just now. And I know people are like, nah, that would be, you, you know, that's stupid. No, never say never. Don't ever say never because it's easy to get into these types of relationships. And that's why I always tell you and clients from the beginning because what will happen is you start being intimate you start spending time with that person here and there and next thing you know you start looking forward to something that may not happen okay so let me just start telling you that from the door but you don't notice that when you start getting deep and you start showing your feelings and emotions from that person you don't notice that that person is unavailable they're emotionally not there and sometimes people like to equate closeness and intimacy with being hurt they tend to pull away which means that honestly when they start pulling away you want to go to them even more it's an innate ability that honestly humans have it's almost like a challenge are you trying to figure out what's going on or like us women do i want closure i just want him to say or her say that they don't want to be bothering me no they are telling you they don't have to just say you know what we're over we're done or whatever because you may not be done to them you're just like an option unfortunately but now you want to know okay what's going on and you might get on the phone and tell somebody like i just want closure you don't want to know you just want validation whether it's over or not but guess what no you're not you're not over it's just that they leave you in limbo and that's where the confusion occurs and i'm gonna tell you the more you fall for this type of person honestly the more they're going to distance themselves from you if that even makes any sense because again they don't want committed but i guarantee you one thing i can almost guarantee it 90 percent of the time 95 probably when you start backing away from them they're going to notice and next thing you know they're going to start you know calling you checking in with you planning all over again these types of situations or relationship it's always a cycle it's a pattern so i tell people look don't worry about what a person says look at the pattern that they are exemplifying patterns in these relationships are very important if you can't remember that's fine write it down but i guarantee you they're exhibiting some type of pattern now, it may not seem like streamlined to you, and it might not be like every Monday he calls me, every Wednesday and the following week he calls me and he does something. It may not be that. It's just going to be an unstructured pattern, if that makes sense, okay? And honestly, 
because you have all these feelings and emotions, and I know it's hard because guess what? Many have done that got the t-shirt for it. They're not gonna reciprocate your feelings, okay? And that's where the reciprocity comes in. And I know people may ask me, like, wait, what is, what is feelings and emotions got to do with reciprocity? Because they may have already told you these things to make you feel like they're emotionally there. So they're already setting you up for nonsense. So that's why I said it's disrespectful. Because, again, if they would have told you all this from the beginning, then the respect would have already been there. But it's not, okay? And I'm going to tell you, unavailable um, emotionally unavailable people anticipate being let down. They do. They're okay with that. All right. Because guess what? They probably have done it to someone else. And that's really a way to protect themselves. They don't make the same effort as you, especially in a relationship. We're not talking about just dating here. We're talking about a relationship. So they're okay with you know the nonsense because they have a pattern too they've gone through several types of relationships where they have pulled this type of craziness okay but i'm gonna tell you for example you pour your heart out to them you express your love and you're committed and how much you care for them and guess what guess what you're gonna get in return little or nothing okay because again they have a difficult time conveying their feelings, their actual feelings, okay? Actual feelings, all right? So that's something, be mindful of. They're like, oh, I like you, you know, I love you. Some of them may say that. And you all like Google eye and everything. You like 40, 50 years old, you all Google eye. But guess what? You can still fall into this trap. Because you got some people out there, they slick with that tongue, honey. They will tell you any and everything to either get you in bed or get what they want out of you. All right? And I'm going to tell you, they really become defensive, especially defensive when it comes to emotional intimacy. So you may experience some rare moments where they're emotionally unavailable, but they may tell you certain things. They may tell you, they'll give you a glimpse of some of their feelings. But all along, when you start saying, oh, yeah, I got them. No, 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 no. Because that's when they start backing away from you. And also, this is when they tend to be even more resistant. And greater defensiveness and rudeness or even anger happens during this time. So, again, here you are. They tell you a little bit of something. That's true. But next thing you know, you're like, okay, I got him. He, you know, he really cared for me. Uh-uh, he only telling you 1% of the really the big picture, okay? Again, be mindful of this. And I'm going to tell you, honestly, because I just said that, they won't be direct with their emotions. So it's never a balance. Like I said, they won't tell you certain things. And typically, if a person is emotionally available, that like you, it'll be clear for you. However, a person who's emotionally unavailable will leave you with a lot of uncertainty and confusion of where you stand. So, expressing how you feel about this person requires a certain degree of vulnerability, which is something an emotionally unavailable person typically will not do. Okay, they're not going to do this. So if you see early on, and I know I reiterate certain words because I want it to sink in, okay? I don't want you to hear the emotionally unavailable. You have to look for these clues, okay? It's like going to, um, doing a maze or something, going to a maze. You have to pick up the clues as time goes on. And they're not hard. They're probably right there in the beginning. But, you know, sometimes we get excited and we forget all about these clues. We, we don't even think about the good common sense we have. Or one of our family members who, quote, unquote, as we say, dogs and have told you what the deal is. No, we, we, we forget all of that. All right. We do. But they will make you feel when you start telling them about your feelings and how you um, care for them and things like that, they're going to probably make you feel like you're the problem. Because it's a way that emotionally unavailable people act towards you, and they make you feel unwanted, frustrated, or wrong. So, for example, you might be vulnerable and open to them about something deeply personal, and they may have no empathetic response, leaving you wonder 
if you are the problem. So I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna give you an example of that, right? Your car break down, or you need a couple of dollars. They be like, oh, I'll pray for you. Or they be like, I got you. They ain't never got you, okay? They ain't never got you. Because again, they're not there. So I'm gonna tell you, I don't know if you realize, but I'm gonna give you eight reasons why this person is emotionally unavailable, all right? You may want something that, guess what? They're not willing to achieve because they're unavailable. So I'm going to end it with this, but be on the lookout for emotional manipulation and abuse. We'll talk about that at a later date. But the insecurities they have, really, they'll start gaslighting you and guilting you. So these red flags that I told you about, the eight ones that I mentioned, believe me when I tell you, they're going to be harmful and they may even contribute to depression or low self-esteem, esteem, okay? But don't change who you are, all right? Don't change. If you want something, especially nowadays, and I know I've mentioned it, you've seen it. It's so easy to just be like, you know what? I'm done with this. Like, I really don't have time. Because again, when you reach a certain age, you don't have time for nonsense. And I know people are like, oh yeah, well, you know what? It's not like I'm gonna die tomorrow. No, it's not about that, but you just don't have time for foolishness, all right? You could be really moving on to someone who is gonna be emotionally available to you, all right? And that's what it is. And it's it's possible for that person to love um, you or want you, but the breakdown of this and how it all goes, honestly, is very demissive. And also, guess what? I would suggest you reevaluate this type of relationship. Do you really want it? Don't get into this, and I know I've said it, but don't get into this. Next thing you know, you're a month in, or you two months in, you don't pass a couple of holidays, you don't pass a couple of years, and now you're looking at this like, I can't believe it. And I always say, therapists had therapists before, coaches had coaches before, in some capacity. And you know, I'll keep it real with you. I was in this situation for seven years. And I know people are like, what, seven years? Because guess what? When life gets in the way of you, you know, and I'm not talking about a bad thing, but you're working. You could be going to school, anything, because that's what I was going through. I was working, um, I was going to school, I was taking care of my daughter, all of these things. And I didn't even realize that, guess what, seven years passed by. So don't ever say never, and don't ever say what you would not do and what you would not accept. Because again, I've been through this, where persons call me like 12, one o'clock, I'm like, all right, let's hang out or whatever. I'm close to New York, so, you know, honestly, with one o'clock in the morning, it's really nothing special on a Saturday. We can go out and have a good time because it's a city that never sleeps in New York. But all along, it's just something to kind of fill that time frame within, and that's really what it is. And I'll tell you again, once you get emotionally attached to people like this, it's hard to shake them, not for them, but for you because you are attached to them and they haven't defined what you are. You're just thinking like, okay, you know, maybe we are together because he hasn't said otherwise. He may not say otherwise or she may not say otherwise. It's up to you to demand the respect, okay? And like I you know, said the words to Lauren Hill, she's saying, what I have to do? Guess what? A lot of people are in that. You can have so much control at your job. You can have so much control of having your kids together and everything, but you can fall for this nonsense. You really can. Believe me, because when I say the word believe me, that's because guess what? I call a thing a thing. Been there, done that, all right? And it's the truth, to the point where you're so far into it, you don't want to tell anybody but a coach or therapist. You don't even want to tell your best friend. You sure don't want to tell your family and friends because they're going to be looking at you like you're crazy. Like, what? You really you really tolerated that craziness? Yes, but guess what? They probably did the same thing. So don't feel bad. But I'm going to wrap it up, and I hope you enjoyed this you know, segment of being emotionally unavailable. But please, be mindful. 
and also use your good common sense that you were given, all right? That's what it boils down to. Again, you know, my name is Dr. Lamar Spencer. And then also, if you want to get in touch with me, 973-214-6464. Again, 973-214-6464. Or you can reach me on my uh, website, drlamarspencer.com or gmail drlamarspencer at gmail or all of my socials I'm on TikTok, Instagram Twitter, Facebook I have a great group there but please, when you think you're starting to be into this and you're not really sure give me a call, it's free 30 minutes, we'll give you 30 minutes, I might give you 40 minutes, I'm joking, but no, I'm going to give you some time to think about this because you don't want to be into this craziness but thank you so very much again and everyone, enjoy the rest of your day, take care